All right, Dr. John Shea here. Anyway, uh, I posted a few videos analyzing how the fire might be progressing. The Bobcat fire we're talking about here in the San Gabriel Mountains that are uh, starting to move towards the communities, the foothill communities of Monrovia, Duarte, Bradbury, uh, Sierra Madre, Pasadena, even Altadena. And the path towards these communities is actually uh, ripe for fire just because there have not been fires here in the past several decades and there's a lot of uh, chaparral, uh, timber, uh, just uh, old fuels that can burn easily. There are areas of grass that were uh, grown in after old fires had burned away that chaparral and the fire is not burning that grass that easily. So the path with the best fuel is leading it directly to our communities. So what I'm doing right now is outside. You can see I'm kind of out there in the wilderness, a lot of trees out here, but I'm out here to set up a sprinkler system. And it's just gonna be a temporary makeshift sprinkler system. There have been studies that showed that having exterior sprinklers helped to save the homes. There was a uh, incident, uh, in a, um, a case study in Cook County, Minnesota, I believe. And in 2001, they had installed sprinklers, exterior sprinklers on 188 homes and buildings. Not every building had it, but 188 buildings did get it in 2001. In 2007, they had a massive wildfire rage through there and it burned everything in sight except for the 188 buildings that had exterior sprinklers. Over a hundred other buildings were burned in its path because they were not uh, equipped with the sprinkler system. So in uh, just an emergent, kind of desperate last minute attempt here, I went out and bought a bunch of uh, supplies here. I bought a handful of fire, uh, I'm sorry, a handful of garden hoses. I bought a, a bunch of these uh, sprinklers, these oscillating sprinklers that, that will spray. I have a few of these, uh, these other sprinklers that I'm going to put on the ground to help uh, moisten the areas that are very dry, the, the, the trees back there. <clears throat> these oscillating sprinklers are going to go on top of the roof. I've already put two of them up there and um, I'm putting a third one that I need to set up. So I'm going to show that to you uh, of what we're doing to help try to mitigate the risk of fire. Of course, some people might ask why even go through this? Just let the insurance take care of it. Of course, you know, there's going to be a big hassle if things burn down and uh, there's going to be a big hit to the insurance companies. So somebody's going to lose through this. Even if you get yourself insured and, and get yourself paid out, uh, somebody's going to lose through all of this. And so trying to help the community, help all of us, we do our part, see what we can do to, to prevent this. Uh, the other thing is uh, these sprinkler systems ideally should be set on a remote activation so that you can evacuate and then you could start the, the water when you know the fires are right upon your house or getting really close. You don't want this to just run all the time and then cause a drop in water pressure if everybody, if everybody was doing this. It should be something that's activated at the time of the fire. And this is just a, a way to help prevent ignition of the home. So I'm gonna go climb up on the roof and I'll show you what we're setting up. All right, as we climb up on the roof here, a few things I wanted to point out. Now my roof luckily has concrete shingles and so they don't burn themselves. But the, th the problem is there are little cracks in between where embers that fly in from hundreds of yards away especially when there's a strong wind, will fly long distances and they'll get trapped. And if it can get underneath these tiles, and I've seen little cracks and cracked tiles, it can get underneath there and it can get to a, a much more flammable, combustible layer and it could sit there and smolder and then burn and then and burn down your house. Luckily, the, the gutters are metal, but in this case, I actually have wood trim on the outside of these these gutters and so th these are areas that can burn as well some homes in california especially this california ranch style cliff may style homes have these beams that stick out these large beams that stick out that are wood that stick out past the roof line and these are painted white there's some water damage on these we just moved here so these uh were repaired and then primed so it's just a bunch of white primer on it but if an ember came flying in here and flew in and got jammed underneath here or just landed on this, this could ignite and this could burn too. That's why th this is how it all happens. It's a ignition problem. Luckily we have 
uh, brick and stone down there, but the wood here is a source of, of, of burn, of a fire. And then as we come up here, we can kind of see, you know, we have the, the trees around. Those trees need to be cut back and there's some leaves there. I need to blow all that off. And then just over the top here, we see part of those San Gabriel Mountains that are on fire just on the other side. So we're gonna uh, try to mitigate that risk by adding some sprinklers. Um, I'm gonna put them on, on the top there. There's actually one I put there. There's gonna be a few other ones that I place, about three I believe is all I'll need. And then I'm gonna put the rest of them on the grounds below. All right, I'm gonna to get to work here. Some of the things you gotta pay attention to when you're up here on the roof, as you can see here, there's a bunch of leaves here that are you know, just dried combustible leaves ready to, to ignite. It's better if we clean that up, uh, as well as little areas where debris has collected. Uh, sometimes there are cracks in the tiles, and I'd already cleaned this one out, but underneath there, there was a lot of dried leaves that could burn. You can already see in these cracks, there's some uh, leaves here. So any of those things can burn and fire can expand. It's hard to get rid of all of it, so we're gonna have to just moisten it using the sprinkler system. But again, you can kind of see, you know, the, the mounds are right there. Got some trees here. Uh, in general, cleared away as much as stuff we could down there. And we're gonna continue to set up the sprinkler system. Okay, so I just set up the third sprinkler here. This one, you can see this one set up here on this roof here. And that's gonna help water towards that direction, towards that chimney, which I also have a sprinkler on top of it. As well, it's gonna help uh, sprinkle towards this direction over the garage. So, um, th so this is the setup I'm doing. I'm not, I don't know if this is the best way. You know, they, they use other type of sprinklers that spray more of a mist. Uh, this is the best I can do with what was available. So I'm going to just hope for the best and just have it ready in case we need it. If we don't need it, then that's great. It would be better that I set this up for nothing. I'd rather that be the case. But uh, I like to analyze the situation, see what we can do to help ourselves, to help, the, help prevent any uh, problems that may come along. You know, we don't have to be as helpless as we think. At the same time, we have faith that things are gonna work out the way they're supposed to. Already we saw that the Santa Ana winds were, uh, were prevented from, from hitting the fires overnight like they predicted. I'm up here and you know, we, can, we can see the flags are blowing there below me. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a bit of a wind now, but it's actually kind of blowing from the, uh, the, the southeast uh, going up towards the northwest. So that, that's kind of a, a good sign, at least at this time. So things are, are looking up in our favor. And I'm gonna uh, come over here and show you what I did over by the, the chimney. But yeah, we just have to realize, you know, it's not about trying to hold on to our possessions or trying to, to lay up treasures for ourselves in this world, because you know, you're never gonna take it with, the, with you. You know, there's more important things that you should be thinking about. But, uh, you know, we're trying to all do our part. You know, here's a, a sprinkler on top of the chimney and it's gonna cover that area there. And of course you see the beautiful mountains right beside us. And that's the risk when you move to this areas, these areas of the foothills, there are the animals and then there's the fires. But you can live with it, you can work with it. And you know, life is uh, what you make of it. So um, pray everybody's well, God bless.